what we have coming up in the workshop will be absolute torture. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. We are in the new paint pit. We are in the new studio. Uh, of course, I've been I've been moving over the summer and doing doing stuff. So unfortunately, I've had taken a break, but I'm back. And as you can see, oh, let's turn to the other side. As you can see, I have a brand new backdrop. Bam. And of course, you can see that I have a zillion and one boxes that I still have to unpack and put away. Uh, but I have the studio already set up, paint to ready to go to paint. So we are going to hop right into it. I am going to do a nice torture chamber set for Halloween, which is right around the corner. And of course, one of my favorite movie horror villains of all time. So what we're going to do today is we are going to do the torture scenery pack that comes from Mantic Games. And there are one piece, it's a, it's a one piece set. What I have here is I have just the stuff that that's wood, but there is a few more pieces that we will get to in later videos. And we'll put those out. So we have a dead guy. And sarcophagus with two different styles of tops. We have kind of like a... Uh, it's almost like a... Uh, what do you call it? Oh, I'm sorry. An Iron Maiden because it's got all the spikes inside. Or we have the Egyptian sarcophagus top, which just it's, talks to me, it screams to me. We have a cage. And we have a mummy. So right now, anyway, we are going to look at the wood the wood stuff and we are going to see what it all what it all entails and to get it up and running and looking at least passable if not better than passable for your tabletop for your DD &D games or whatever you wherever you might need scary dun dungeon torture equipment uh, and again, like I said, it is Terrain Crate from Mantic Games. And this one here is their Starship scenery, which we may get to at a later date somewhere down the road. Who knows? We'll see. But for now, we're going to get started with this. I am going to... Let's see. I have so many brushes now. It's crazy. It's so crazy. It almost feels like I have an actual paint studio. It's weird. You know, I can actually pick and choose, you know, a different style of brush instead of trying to make a brush do, do 16 different uh, 16 different jobs. So I'm using one of Citadel's new, um, oh, I'm having such a bad day with words today. I am so sorry. Uh, not, uh, it's not artificial, but it's artificial. It's synthetic. That's the word I'm looking for. So I'm using one of uh, Citadel Colors new uh, synthetic brushes. I'm using the 
medium base, and one of their new colors, Thrandia, uh, Thrandia Brown. And we are going to use that basically as our base coat for all. Uh, for everything that you see uh, on the table right here. So what we have here is we have a coffin, we have the rack, or well, some kind of torture table anyway. This looks more like the rack. And then here is a small table with instruments. So it's the it's it's the work table for whoever's doing whatever. Take some of the some of the new brown. I I haven't actually used this, this used this color yet, so I'm excited to. And we are going to grab. To me, it look to me this is the stretching rack because you know it's got the it's got the wheels on it that you can you know stretch a person out, and it looks like it's you know made of wood and. Steel, but right now what we're going to do, or not steel, but maybe steel. But so right now what we're going to do is we're just going to paint everything brown, and then we're going to go back in and do the details later. We're going to do the, we're going to do the, uh, the metal and everything. Yeah. After we're all done, we'll pick it out. It'll be a lot nicer. A lot easier to do. I'm excited to see how this see how this works. I mean, I do I do a fantasy army for myself. And of course, with fantasy armies, there's there can there can be a lot of wood. Uh, so this is a good. This is kind of a good. If, if you know, if you're painting miniatures and this is something that you that you like doing, then this is a good skill to to learn is how to uh, how to make realistic looking wood and that is what we're going to try for today now these mantic uh, these mantic sets these uh terrain sets actually look pretty good you know like they they're they're single, uh, they're a single cast, so there's no, there's nothing for me to put together. They all come out in one piece, but they come unprimed. But they do come kind of in the color. They're sort of uh, uh, cast in the in in the color. So these ones are brown because well, wood's brown. Uh, but if you're like you know if you're like me and you wanna want something to to pop a little bit more on your gaming table, then brown, plain brown, just isn't going to quite cut it. So you prime them up, and away you go. You know, for as small as this is, I probably could have used a bigger brush. So 
just to cover more ground. But that's all right. I mean, I'm not going anywhere. I don't think you guys are going anywhere. Those of you. Sit down and watch and listen to me. Carry on. And for those of you that do, thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm, you know, for this, you know, I'm doing a, doing a really dirty job. I'm just slapping the base color down. No need to be neat. Like I said, we're just gonna kind of slap the brown on everything, and then we're gonna pick out details later. Actually, what I'm going to do is move from my medium layer. Let's find a slightly larger brush. <laughs> Sorry for snorting in your faces <laughs> like that. Uh, let's see. What have I got that will do the job? We'll try a large, we'll try the natural fiber Citadel large base brush. I bet you this will go a heck of a lot quicker. You know, again, not that I don't want you to be here. Not that I don't want to be here. It's just if you can find a good brush that, you know, that'll do your job, that'll do the job for you. That'll do the job that you need. Nice, timely fashion. And why not do so? Now, even though they didn't do any of the wood graining on the other side, on the on the back side, and the other side of this, we're still gonna we're still gonna give it a bit of a paint job. So it looks, like, it looks like this one is just a straight up torture act. You know, they tie people, you know, they shack, shackle people down. And this is where they gotcha or, you know, whatever. Yeah, I probably should have used this one from the start. What? You know what? That's okay. Oops. 
<laughs> Drop the piece of bean as it happens. Of course, my hands are getting all painty, but that's okay. What's creativity without a little bit of mass? And like I said, yes, I know that I'm going over stuff that will be metal or steel or whatever later on. But that's all right. Bring you the inside of the coffin. There we are. Now comes one of the last. Actually, we're going to give. We're going to finish this one, because I thought I'd finished it, but I apparently did not. Oh, silly me. Silly paint slinger. Getting ahead of yourself. Now we're on to the last piece, and the last piece, like I said, it's the little table. It has little instruments and stuff on it. Now, it was nice and sharp and focused just a second ago, and now it's not, because cameras are stupid. I think we're going to have fun with this one. Okay. Well, other than wishing it would go ahead and oops. Uh I have the quintessential modeler's fingers today. And most of you out there who do managers should know what that is. So here, you know. Can't seem to hold on to anything for your life. Now we've got the majority of everything all all taken care of. Just going to go over a few few parts, few parts. Make sure that I've got good coverage. On everything. There we are. All right. All right. 
right. Clean out the brushes, of course. Don't worry about your fingers. It's acrylic paint. Should come off relatively easy when you wash your hands. Well, yeah, you know, so what we're doing is we're, you know, waiting for a little, for these to dry a little bit, and then we're going to hit everything with Agrax Earthshade. Of course, make sure you shake the crap out of your paints and kind of move. So I'm in shadow. Because only the shadow knows. I, don't know. I got nothing. I'm just playing around. I'm happy that I have my studio up and running. I'm also glad that, again, normally, I'm also glad that I have my sign up. Eventually, hopefully, this will all be gone and replaced with this, the other stuff. See up there, you can see the wig and headpiece that I wore when I did the Klingon models. And if you haven't, uh, if you haven't seen that video, you can check it back. You can go on to the, our YouTube site, which is the Rat Hole Tabletop Reviews, and you can probably look it up there. You might even be able to check it out on our Facebook page. That I'm not sure about. Okay. And now where is my... There it is. And then now we're going to give a lot of things a very healthy dose of Agrax Earthshade. And what it's going to do is it's going to get into those nooks and crannies. And when it dries, it'll help bring out the texture. Now this was just to see if I could do it. Yeah, apparently I can. But usually, you know, I'm up here so you guys can see it. But I wanted to see if I could do it off my painting table. Just for S and G. And if you don't know what that means, uh, you can you can ask somebody. What this does is it actually helps bring out another part that I can paint. It helps bring out that wood grain that's inside, inside and all around. For these ones, I probably wouldn't be too, too worried about how much or how little you schlop on there. Schlop. You know, the more you do, probably the better it'll look. Are. And again, if we get the wash 
you know, under things that we don't want washed right away. Yeah, that's okay. Because it'll be picked up with other colors and rewashed if you're going to wash it with the appropriate colors. No huge deal. Okay. And you know, if you do slop too much of the uh, too much of the shade on, you can move it around, take some off the brush in other places, and then come back and sop up the uh, the excess in the one area. Apparently, I tried to wash my hands, but not with soap and water. <laughs> Bad jokes everywhere today. Now, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, or if you do, you can be like some of my other painting colleagues, especially, uh, well, some of my other colleagues who use like, the blue gloves or the, the surgical gloves and what have you to keep their, you know, to help not get fingerprints on whatever it is that they're doing and to help keep their hands clean you like getting a little messy you don't mind a little bit of fingerprints in your paint kind of like I do then go ahead get messy if you want something a little bit neater and a little bit nicer go their way no way is wrong no way is right comes down to personal preference. That's really what it is. Things are coming along quite nicely, I think. Be nice to see how everything looks. And all the wash is dry. You know, before we go on to the next, the next steps. But as it is, I'm already, I'm already beginning to like how this. Torture, torture chamber chamber setup is beginning to look. Hmm. 
All right, go ahead. All right, my, my fans and everybody out there. We are pretty much done for this episode. But we'll be back. This stuff will be dry. And we will start working on the wood. And then we'll start working on the metal. So until then, it's beautiful to see you guys. And I'm welcome uh, welcome you back it's nice to also be back uh, until then paint safe and we'll see you in the workshop mm -hmm.